In this video, we're going to look at problems involving speed, distance and time. To begin with, we're going to look at some very basic questions and use simple logic to solve them. We're then going to go on and look at the speed distance time triangle and answer some more challenging questions. So let's go ahead and start off with three simple questions. What I'm going to do here is use basic logic. We'll find an answer for it, then once we've introduced the speed distance time triangle, we will use that triangle to solve these correctly. So the technique that I'm going to use now, I'm certainly not suggesting you use, but it is an option if you're really struggling with this topic. So in the first one, John walks at three miles an hour for four hours. How far does he walk? What we're looking for is the distance. We have the speed and we have the time. Let's just look at three miles an hour. That's telling me he's walking three miles every hour. So in the first hour, he would walk three. In the second hour, he would walk three. In the third hour, he would walk three. And in the fourth hour, he would walk three. That gives us now 12 and the units are going to be miles. Alternatively, what we could have said is the distance he's traveled is the speed multiplied by the time or the time multiplied by the speed. So three times by four is going to give me the 12 miles. You can just manually count those up. So four hours, three miles every hour, 12 miles. What we can say from this now is that the distance D is equal to the speed multiplied by the time. This is going to form part of our triangle. Okay, let's look at the next one. On the next one, it says it takes Sue two hours to travel eight kilometers. What is the average speed? So if you think she's doing eight kilometers in two hours, what we want to find is how far she would do in one hour. We can therefore say that is the speed in kilometers an hour. So she does eight kilometers in two hours. So we could say now that eight divided by two would tell us how many kilometers she did in one hour. That's going to give us four. And we can write this now as kmph, kilometers per hour. We could write this now as km slash h, so kilometers an hour. Or we could write this now as kmh to the minus one. Generally speaking, you will see one of these. So just think about this reasonably. Eight kilometers in two hours, four kilometers in one hour, and that's four kilometers an hour. What we can say from this is that the speed is going to be the distance divided by the time. So if we go ahead and write that down, that's what we've got. OK, let's look at the next one. Again, using simple logic away from this topic, so basic common sense. Pete jogged 18 miles at 6 miles an hour. How long did it take him to complete the 18 miles? So if we think now, we're looking at him travelling at 6 miles an hour. That means for every hour he's doing 6. So after, we could of course use this one. After 1 hour, we could say 1 times by 6 is 6. So that would be 1 hour. Now, one times, uh, 2 times by 6 is going to give us 12. Well, that's 2 hours. 3 times by 6 is going to give us 18. So we could say from this that it would be 3 hours. And again, we need the correct units. And if we look, we've got 18 miles, miles an hour. So we're looking at hours. Well, think about this reasonably. This is the distance he's covered. And he's covering now 6 miles in every hour. So all we would say to ourselves, well, he's got to cover now 18 miles, but he's doing this now at 6 miles an hour. How many times does 6 go into 18? The answer is 3, and that will give us 3 hours. So we're using the correct uh, units just here, and we can say now that the time is going to be the distance divided by the speed. And that is where we're going in terms of a triangle. So just think reasonably, 6 miles after the first hour, 12 and then we're going to have 18, so it'll be three hours. Obviously, this technique is massively limited, and I'm not ever uh, suggesting that this is what you do, but if you're really struggling, you can't access it uh, to a certain level, just think reasonably, let's work out how these can be done. So let's now look at this speed, distance, time triangle. We've got speed, we've got distance, we've got time. We've got a multiplication sign and a division line. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and look at finding the speed. So if I just put my finger over speed, when I put my finger over speed, that's the one I'm trying to find, I've got distance divided by time. So what we've got then, and we can write this out, is that the speed, looking at my triangle, is going to be equal to the distance, so distance divided by the time. 
So that's reasonable. We can say that S is equal to D divided by T. So by simply looking at the triangle. Here's the division line, here's the multiplication. We'll always get two pieces of information and we need to find the third. So if we give them the distance and the time, we want the speed. Let's now go ahead and look at finding the distance. Well, I put my finger over distance. If I want to find the distance, which I can just jot down, so the distance, that is going to be equal to the speed multiplied now by the time, or if you like, the other way around. It doesn't matter. So we can say that D is equal to S multiplied by T. That's the only one that we're going to be multiplying by. When we do the distance, the distance now is the only one that needs multiplying. Let's go ahead and find now the time. So if I want to find the time, finger over time. If I need to find the time, I'll be given the distance and the speed, and we simply divide these. So we can say now that the time taken, so time taken for our journey, for example, is going to be the distance divided by the speed. So divided by the speed, so we can say now that T is equal to D divided by S. Hopefully you can see now for the more simple cases, often if students struggle to remember these, it's easier just to think about common sense. Let's now go back and look at those questions and actually use these triangles to help us out. So if we look at the question again, we've got the speed, the distance, and the time triangle just here. John walks at three miles an hour for four hours. How far does he walk? Any question like this, the first thing to do is check that the units are the same. Miles an hour and hours. We've got now the speed, we've got the time, we want the distance. So just go through the question, how far does he walk? D is the distance. So what I'm going to do is now put my finger over D and I realise now that that is the speed times the time. So all I'm going to write now is that the distance, which we want, is going to be speed multiplied by time. So we can say that's 3 times by 4, that is going to give me 12, and the correct units are miles. So nice and straightforward, we've just gone ahead and found the third one, given the first two. So this one, that is time, that is distance, we want now the speed. So what is the average speed? Finger over speed, speed now is distance divided by time. So if we do that, we can say now S is equal to the distance divided by the time. So we can say from this now that the speed is going to be 8 divided by the time, which is 2, and that's going to give us 4, and we need the correct units, and that's kilometres an hour. If we now look at the next one, with the next one, we've got the distance, we've got now miles an hour, which is going to be a speed, and we want the time. Think of the key words, how long, how long is time, how far is distance, and quite clearly speed is just speed. So we want the time, finger over time, distance divided by speed, so time is distance divided by speed, so time is going to be 18, that's a distance, divided by 6, so that's going to give us now that t is going to be equal to 3, and we would say now that the correct units are hours. So straight off we can see now these are exactly the same answers as we got before. Um, we've just used a more formal approach. This is far better to use as it will help us out with all problems, especially when the numbers get messy. So let's go on and look at a question. Frida travels at 6.7 miles an hour for 1 hour and 30 minutes. Find out how far she travelled. So miles an hour and we've got hours. We're just about to focus on a massive mistake made, uh, made by so many pupils. They put 1.3 hours. That is not correct. 1 hour 30 minutes is 1.5 hours. If we just think about this reasonably, 30 of 60 minutes is equal to 1 half. So, for example, if I had now 1 hour 45 minutes, it would be 1.75 hours. It's not 1.45. So let's go through the question and look at what we want. So we've got now the speed, we've got the time, and we're looking for how far did she travel? Well, that's the distance. Finger over distance, it's speed multiplied by time. So we can say now that distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. The distance is going to be 6.75 multiplied now by 1.5. Don't make the mistake of putting 1.3. Let's go ahead and work that out, 6.75. 6.75 is 
So 6.75 multiplied now by 1.5, that'll give us 10.125. So we can say now that the distance is going to be 10.125. We're looking at miles here. This is miles per hour, therefore we're going to have miles. We need the correct units. If you wanted to, you could say this is going to be 10.1 miles, and that is to one decimal place. We weren't given a level of accuracy, but I'll round that anyway. OK, let's look at another one. Colin covered 32.7 kilometres in three and a quarter hours. Find his average speed. So again, a killer error is to write now here three hours and 15 minutes. That is not three and a quarter hours. Three and a quarter, if you like, or 3.25. So what have we got? We have a distance. We have a time. We want to find the speed. So if we put this on, speed. We're given two, we need to find the third, finger over speed. Speed is distance divided by time. So the distance is 32.7 divided by the time, which is 3.25. And we could go ahead and work that out. So you can see with this one, we couldn't use simple logic as we'd be there forever, 3.25. And that's going to give me on here now, what have we got? 10.06. So this is going to be 10.06, and this will be kilometres an hour. So we've got kilometres an hour, and that is correct to two decimal places. Again, I've chosen the level of accuracy to round two. Let's look at another one. Tina drove from London to Cardiff, which uh, which should I think I should say which is a distance of 155 miles. Her average speed was 48.67 miles an hour. Find out how long it took her to travel from London to Cardiff. Give your answer to the nearest minute. So, a bit more wordy this one. Let's pull some information. This here is the distance. This is the speed, and we want to now find the time. How long? So how long it took her, that is the time. We want the time, it's distance divided by speed. So the time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. So we have a distance of 155 miles. We've got the correct units, so that is 48.67. And then we can go ahead and work this out. So 155 divided by 48.67. That's going to give me on here now, um, what's we got? 3.184 hours. So let's write this in 3.184 dot 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 hours. We're going to look at this shortly and then convert it up. Let's think if this is reasonable. Often students write answers that are completely unreasonable. Say I travelled 150 miles at 50 miles an hour. This would take three hours. So is it reasonable to think that if I do a bit more, at a bit slower rate now, it's going to take us a bit longer. And that's what this is telling us. So, for example, if you had six hours something here, think about this reasonably. If you did three times by 50, 50 miles in the first hour, 50 miles in the second hour, 50 miles in the third hour, after three hours, you've travelled now 150 miles. It's logic that this would seem correct. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to give this to the nearest minute. On this calculator, we simply press this button right here. And that tells me 3 hours, 11 minutes, and nearly 5 seconds. So 3 hours, so 3 hours, and 11 minutes. So 11 minutes to the nearest minute. So that's nearest minute. So just jot him that down. So if you've got one of those calculators, that's what you can do. Alternatively, if we just think about this now, if I subtract 3, what this gives me now is the fraction of the hour. So that's the fraction of the hour. I just multiply by 60 to get the number of minutes. So that would give me 11.08 minutes. So that's what we'd have. So if you don't have one of those calculators, just think about the fraction of the hour that you've got and multiply by the number of minutes, and that will give you the minutes. So it'd be 3 hours and 11 minutes to the next minute. So quite a nice question where we've had to do a little more work. Right, let's have a look at the next one. A particle travels 14.2 kilometres in 37 minutes. We're asked to find its average speed. We've got 37 minutes. Well, that's 37 of 60. This is the fraction of the hour. So what we're going to do is work this answer out in kilometres an hour. Straight off looking at this, we know that the speed is going to be greater than this value. If it's travelled 14.2 kilometres in 37 minutes, 
Generally speaking, this is two thirds of an hour. So we would be looking roughly at anywhere greater than 21 because we'd be adding half of this value on. So if it traveled 14 kilometers in 40 minutes, then we would simply add another seven kilometers on. So I'm going to bear that in mind when I'm looking at my answer. So what do we want from this? Well, let's take the information. This is the distance. We've got now the time, which is 37 minutes. We want to find the speed. So we've got S, so let's put that there. So what we can say from here now is that S is equal to D divided by T. So we've got now the speed is the distance, which is 14.2 divided by this fraction, which I'm just gonna leave as 37 over 60, and we'll put that through a calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. So with this calculator, 14.2 divided now by 37 over 60. So 37 divided by 60. And that gives me now 22.03. So let's write this in. So that's 23, uh, what's it? 23.03, 23.03. And this again is going to be kilometers an hour. Is that reasonable? Well, as I said, if this is doing now 14 kilometers and uh, it's done 14 kilometers in 40 minutes, if we think about this now, this is two thirds of an hour. So if we think about adding another seven, that would take us to the 60, which would have 21 in 60. I appreciate that's not really, uh, if you want to put that as a 20, that makes more sense. So that seems logical. So we're going a, a bit quicker than that. So this is a reasonable answer tab. Make sure your answer is reasonable. If you've got something like 220 or 13, it's simply not going to be the case. A train travels at seven uh, travels 780 meters in 32 seconds. We need to find the average speed in kilometers an hour. We've got it here in meters and seconds. We can do this a couple of different ways. What we could do is convert to begin with, or we could convert afterwards. And what I'll do is look at a general conversion afterwards. So if we think about this, 780 meters, and I'll just write this here, 780 meters. If we think about this now in kilometers, what we could say is that this is going to be 780 of 1,000. If we're moving from meters to kilometers, we need to divide it by 1,000. There are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So let's now look at 32 seconds. So 32 seconds in hours. So what we're going to have then is fine. Let's just put 32. Just think logically about this. There's 60 minutes in uh, six seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, which is going to give us 3,600. So if I want to convert seconds into hours, we can divide it by 3,600. So let's look at the information that we've got. We've got a distance, we've got the time, and we want the speed. So S. So all we're going to do is the distance divided by the time. You can, of course, simplify these hugely. If you want to, you can do. I'm just going to put them through the calculator. So we've got 780 of 1,000. So that now is the distance in now the kilometers. This 32 of 3,600 is now the time in hours. We've got 32 seconds of 3,600 seconds, which is an hour. So if we put this through the calculator, again, I'm not going to simplify it. You can if you wish. 780 divided by 1,000. Then we're going to divide this now by 32 of the 3,600 seconds, but uh, in one hour. So that gives me 87.75. So 87.75, and that will be kilometers an hour. Okay, so that's that's what we've got. That's That seems fairly reasonable. Let's now look at this, and what we're going to do is look at a, a, a conversion after we've done this. So if we're given something in meters per second and we want it in kilometers an hour, or vice versa, what we can go ahead and do is look at a multiplier. One way we can look at this now is to take kilometers now, so let's write this in, so kilometers now to meters per second. So km, so km, and I'll write this in kilometers per hour, and we're going to go from uh, that to meters per second. So if we think, what have I done it now to get from kilometers to meters? The answer is I've multiplied by 1,000. What have I done to get from hours to seconds? I'm going to multiply it by 3,600. 
So if I think about this reasonably, if I want to go ahead and convert, and we can write this now, from kilometers an hour to meters per second, what we're going to do now is multiply this by the 1,000 over 3,600. So 1,000 over 3,600. We can break this fraction down to 10 over 36, which is going to give me 5 over 80. So if you want to go from kilometers to out, uh, kilometers now to meters per second, we're going to multiply it by 5 eighteenths. If we want to go from meters per second to kilometers an hour, we would divide by this value. So divide by 5 over 18, or you could say I'm going to multiply by 18 over 5. It's entirely up to you. So if we now look at this, if I do this, so if I wanted to now go, and this is going to be now from kilometers an hour to meters per second, if I multiply this now by 5 over 18, so multiplying by 5 over 18, this should take me back to meters per second. So meters per second, 23, uh, 24.375. So 24.375, and that would be meters per second, which we could write like so. So let's have a look at this then. If we did this in meters per second, we know that the speed is the distance. So the distance is 780 divided by the time, which is 32 seconds. So meters per second. Let's go ahead and do that. So we've got now the 780 divided by the 32, and we're going to get this answer that we just had which is for 24.375. So if we wanted to go ahead and convert that now to the, um, the uh, kilometer now, we would simply divide it now by the 5 over 18. So 5 over 18, divide my answer by 5 18, and that will take us back to the 87.75. So there you multiply. Um, if you need to work it out, just think about it reasonably, and we can see it like so. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and look at another question. Axel and Lefner are driving along a motorway. They see a road sign. The road sign shows the distance to junction 8. It also shows the average time drivers will take to get to junction 8. So what we've got then is the following. To junction 8, 30 miles, 26 minutes. The speed limit on the motorway is 70 miles an hour. Lefner says we will have to drive faster than the speed limit to go 30 miles in 26 minutes. Is Lefner right? You must show how you got your answer. With a question like this, we can do it loads of different ways. One way we can look at it now is to find the distance that they would travel in the 26 minutes. So we know that the distance is going to be equal to the speed multiplied by the time. So if we did drive at 70 miles an hour, the distance would be the speed, which is 70, multiplied now by 26 minutes. Well, that's 26 of 60. Remember, we're looking at miles now. So if we drove at the speed limit of 70 and we multiplied it now by the time, we're looking for a distance. Is the distance going to be greater than 30 miles? If so, we won't need to break the speed limit. So this is one way of showing it. So 70 multiplied by the 26, let's put this on, 26 over 60. So if you travelled 70 miles an hour for 26 minutes, you would do 30.3 miles uh, in total, 30.3 miles therefore you wouldn't have to break the speed limit so that's one way of looking at it another way is to consider the distance divided by the time so if we think if we've got the distance and let's look at that now the distance divided by the time is going to give us the speed so speed is equal to distance divided by time so if we can show that this is going to be less than 70 miles an hour, then again, we wouldn't need to break the speed limit. And you would answer all of these questions with a logical conclusion. So let's have a look. So the speed, if we travel a distance of 30 divided by the time, now the time is going to be 26 of now the 60. And you can see how very similar all of these calculations are. So if we go ahead and do that, what we're going to have then is the the, the speed that we would need to travel, this is all it's saying, the speed we would need to travel to travel 30 miles in the 26 minutes, so let's put that on, 26 over 60, and this should be less than 70, and that's going to give us 69.2. So we could say now that the speed would be equal to 69.2 if we were going to travel 30 miles uh, in the 26 minutes. So as you can see, even though this is all jazzed up with words, we can simply use our basic logic to make an argument. We can, as stated, we can make different arguments. I've shown two of them, and then you would just write a conclusion. So this would be miles an hour. 
So if we could say from here, now if you wanted to travel 30 miles in 26 minutes, you'd have to travel at 69.2 miles an hour. Or if you did travel at 70 miles an hour for 26 minutes, you would do 30.3 miles an hour. Therefore, you wouldn't have to break the speed limit to do 30 miles. So you decide on how you want to answer it. That is now two of the many different ways that you could do that one. Okay, it takes an aeroplane six and a half hours to travel from London to the USA, a distance of 3,500 miles. What was the average speed? So what we've got then is a distance and we've got a time. So we can say now that the speed is equal to the distance divided by the time. So from here, we can say now that the distance, which is 3,500, divided by 6.5. So in a calculator, if we work that out, let's go ahead and do that, 3,500 divided by 6.5. I'm checking now that I've got the correct units, and that is going to give us now on here, so let's just check that, 3,500 miles, 6.5 hours, 538.46, and so on and so forth. So let's just write that down. What's that going to be? 538.5. So S is going to be equal to 538.5. And we're looking now at miles an hour. So what's the average speed? MPH, miles per hour. If you like, you can write it like so. So if we think reasonably now, if we multiply this answer by 6.5, we're going to get back exactly where we needed. Let's now look at part B. It says, if the same aeroplane travels from London to Spain, a distance of X miles, write in, down in terms of X the time taken. So what we want to do is write down the time. The time, if we look at this, is the distance divided by the speed. So what we've got then is the distance, which is going to be X, divided by the speed, which is going to be 538.5. So that is going to be the time taken, and again, we would say that that was in hours. If we now look at the next one, if the same aeroplane travels from London to Italy in Y minutes, write down an expression in terms of Y for the distance travelled. So what we can say then is the following, the distance is going to be equal to the speed multiplied by the time. And I'm going to write this now as 538.5, and now we're looking at the time. So what we can say from here is that the time is going to be y over 60. So think, we're going now, we're looking at minutes, not hours. So we can say that the distance is going to be 538.5y divided by 60. So slightly more challenging on that one. So that's what we've got. That's the distance, and that will give us now the distance in miles. So uh, a nice little wordy question there. Okay, let's move on. Bill enters a 30-kilometre race. He runs the first 20 kilometres at a speed of x kilometres per hour and the last 10 kilometres at x minus 5 kilometres an hour. His total time for the race was 4 hours. We're asked to write down an equation in terms of x and solve it, and then we're asked what are his speeds for the two parts of the run. This is a really tough question. So let's go ahead and look at setting up. So what we've got then is the time. We know that time is equal to distance divided by speed. So T is equal to D divided by S. What I'm going to do is set this up and use two parts. So what we've got then is 30 kilometres and it's split. So what we can say then is the distance for the first part now is 20 and that will give me over X. That's the speed. So this now is distance divided by speed plus now the next 10 kilometres at a speed of x minus 5 must be equal to the time taken, which is 4. All of these units are correct. 4 hours, 4 kilometres now. We've got kilometres here. So this is our equation. So what we've looked then at is two different times. This time plus this time must be equal to 4 hours. So what we need to do is go ahead and solve it. This is a very tough equation to deal with. So with this one, I'm assuming a, a very good understanding of algebra. If you're not, um, perhaps skipping this is, is an option for you. It is at the top end of most courses. So my common denominator is going to be x. Then we're going to have x minus 5. Then I'm going to have 20 lots of x minus 5 plus 10 lots of x is equal to 4. 
multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator, we're going to have 20x minus 5 plus now 10x will be equal to 4x multiplied by x minus 5. At this stage, you could go ahead and divide this if you wanted. If you wanted to divide it out, you could divide it by 2. It's entirely up to you. I'm not going to. I'm just going to do that at the end. We can have 20x minus 100. Then we're going to have plus 10x is equal to 4x squared minus 20x. So what we have is a quadratic in x. So 4x squared. I've got now, what have I got? 30x here and minus 20x, so that's going to give me now minus 50x, and then I'm going to add the 100 to both sides. So we now have a quadratic equation in x, and I'm going to look to factor this. So if I just go ahead, dividing this by 2, 2x squared minus 25x, and then we're going to have plus 50. So I've just divided that by 2, and it looks like I can factor this. That looks to be 2x minus 5 and then x minus 10. So let's have a go at that. So what have we got? We've got 2x minus 5. And I'll just check this. It's going to work. And then we're going to have x minus 10. And that will be equal to 0. So from here, the algebra says that x would be equal to 5 over 2. Or now x would be equal to 10. So we've got two possible values. Let's just go ahead and, and check now at the, the validity of both of these. So straight off now, if I try and substitute this in, remember, we're running now uh, at a speed of x kilometers per hour. So if I put in 2.5 here, 2.5 minus 5 gives me a negative number. Therefore, this isn't a valid solution. So what I'm going to say is not valid, so not valid. Therefore, what we're going to have is 10 is our solution for x. So we solve the equation for x. Now, uh, write down an equation in terms of x and solve it. x has got to be 10. It doesn't work for 2.5. So if we think about it now, 2.5 minus 5 is going to give us now on here. We've got, uh, and we're assuming um, this is all distance rather than velocity. So x is going to be equal to 10. So when x is equal to 10, if we look at it just here, what are its speeds uh, now for each part of the run? Well, what we've got then is x is equal to 10. And it's x kilometers per hour. So what we've got then is 10 kph, so 10 kilometers per hour, so kmph. And then if we think about this one now, what we've got is x minus 5 kilometers an hour. So that would give us now on here 5 kilometers an hour. So let's just put that in 5 kilometers per hour. So he's got these two average speeds. Let's just check we've got this right. So he runs first 20 at a speed of x kilometers an hour. Well, that's going to be 10. And then the last 10 at x minus 5, which is going to be 5. So what are the speeds for its two parts? And that generally makes pretty much sense. And of course, if you think about this now, if this was 10, we'd have 2. And then we'd have now on here 10 over 5, which is 2, which of course gives us 4. So we can see that our uh, algebra has stacked up. So quite a nice, um, quite a nice little question. As I say, for maths, that is really quite challenging. OK, let's look at another one. Bill, oh, he's, he's back again. Bill and Dan take part in a fun run. Bill's average speed is x plus 4 kilometres an hour, and Dan's is 3x kilometres an hour. Bill take, uh, completes his run in x minus 1 hours, and Dan in x minus 2 hours. We're asked to write down two expressions uh, representing the distance travelled by both runners. We're asked to combine these expressions to find value of x, and then it says what was Bill's speed. So if we look at this now, Bill's speed is x plus 4, and what we want is the distance. So if we just consider, we've got x plus 4, which is a distance, and we've got x minus 1, which is the time. So the distance is going to give us the speed. And let's just put this on. Let's just put these on. That is Bill's speed, and that is his time. Okay, completes his running. So that is his time. If we look at Dan, Dan's speed, just here, and that is going to be his time. So what we can say from here now is that distance, so the distance is going to be equal to speed multiplied by time. So if we look at Bill, what we can say, so this is Bill, we're going to say that the distance is going to be the speed, which is the x plus 4 multiplied now by the time, which is going to be x minus 1. If we look at Dan, we've got now the distance, well that's going to be a speed, which is 3x multiplied now by the x minus 2, which is the time. 
So there we go. There, write down two expressions representing the distance travelled by both runners. I'm not going to expand the brackets. I'll just leave it here. So we need to combine these expressions to find the value of x. So let's just think about this reasonably. If they're running a fun run, they're going to run the same distance. It's fairly logical that, that if they're going to be in this fun run, the time taken now is for the same distance. So all we would need to do is simply set these equal. So the distance bill travelled, which is x plus 4, x minus 1, must be the same as the distance down travelled, which is 3x, x minus 2. So again, we've got another quadratic in x, expanding the brackets, x squared plus 3x minus 4 is equal to 3x squared minus 6x. So we go left-hand side to 0, Three, uh, so we're going to subtract an x squared from both sides. Let's do it in one go. We're going to be left now with 2x squared. So let's do that. So 2x squared. Then we're going to have minus 9x. And then we're going to have, uh, what's that going to be? Plus 4. And that's going to be equal to 0. So again, that looks like it's going to factor. Uh, 2 times by 4 is going to give us 8. So we can go ahead and do that. So what's that going to factor to? What are we going to end up with on there? 2x minus 1 and x minus 4. Let's just jot those down. So... 2x minus 1, we'll check that this works, 2x minus 1, and then we're going to have x minus 4, and that's equal to 0. So from here, our algebra tells us that x is going to be equal to 1 half, or x is going to be equal to 4. So let's, again, check the validity uh, for both of these solutions. So if we look now, um, let's think about this. Right, OK, Bill completes his run in x minus 1 hours. So if x was a half, he's completed it in negative 1 half hours. Um, unless he's some kind of uh, hero um, or some bizarre freak, he can't do that. So we can say that this is not a valid solution. So not valid. It works for the algebra, but it doesn't work for the actual context of the question, as time can't be negative. So x is going to be equal to 4. So if we look at this now, we need to find Bill's average speed. So all we've got to do is put it in here, just here. So if this was Bill's speed, it was x plus 4. Well, we know that x was equal to 4, so that's going to be 4 plus 4, which is going to give me 8 kilometres per hour. So 8 kph if I want. If we look at this, Dan's would be 12. Uh, we would have Bill completing this in 3 hours, and then Dan completing it in 2 hours. So again, really tough question. Nice bit of algebra involved, but again, we're just simply using speed, distance, time. So there we go. There's an overview of speed, distance, time. Hopefully, um, it's catered for all. Um, as stated at the start, I don't advocate using that particular approach, but it's an option for you.